Hi everyone. Um, in this third video on the kinetic molecular theory, I want to do something a little um, different. And this is to kind of highlight this idea that we tend to use computer simulation to learn about a particular microscopic system. And what I want to do in this video is to have you go through a particular simulation that's based on the kinetic molecular theory. So it's developed um, using the concepts or the postulates of the uh, kinetic molecular theory. And I want to go through this simulation uh, and have you go through them and have you see that the simulation allows us to explain the relationships that are observed in the empirical laws, okay, Boyle's law and so on. So <clears throat> just before we actually get to the simulation, I want to mention that this is really a fairly common practice these days because we have computer technology um, and, you know, you can basically program a particular um, mathematical equation or several mathematical equations into a computer program and afterwards you can run these uh, so-called simulations to basically create different types of events and that helps us understand what's going on microscopically and that usually what that allows you to do is then allows you to make further uh, tests to test your hypotheses okay and a lot of these uh, come under the label molecular dynamics or MD simulations. You'll hear this more often if you if you uh, go further into chemistry or into physics. Um, these type of simulations are run so that you can then uh, come up with new experimental ideas. This is very often done in all kinds of chemistry. I was uh, before in biochemistry so we definitely did quite a bit of it to try to understand uh, certain systems in bi uh, biology. So what we'll do now is go through a particular computer simulation. Again, this is based on the equations from the kinetic molecular theory. And we'll use it to help us explain why we see the empirical gas laws. Okay, so the particular simulation I want you to uh, try to understand is available from this website from Oklahoma State. Uh, so the people there had basically written this program and the website looks something like this. We'll actually go there in a second. but uh, basically, you can go there and play with it yourself using your own computer. Um, you just need Java to be installed in your computer to be able to run this. But what I'll do is I'll go through in the video and then run through a couple of the uh, uh, setups for the experiment uh, of the simulation so you can actually see how it's done. The goal here is to use the simulation to explain how we get the empirical gas laws, how we can explain the empirical gas laws, why is pressure and volume inversely related and so on. Okay, So we want to uh, relate what's going on microscopically in the simulation to the macroscopic laws that we already know, Boyle's law and so on. Okay, And <clears throat> the goal is really to answer the following five questions. Uh, and if you look at this, these are all very similar questions, which is, why why is Boyle's law uh, observed? Okay, in other words, why is pressure times volume equals a constant? Why is it that when pressure goes up, volume has to go down when temperature and number of moles are constant? Can we explain it using uh, this simulation? And all of these are uh, questions that are, you have to answer as well. Now, next to the video, you'll have a form. The form will basically ask these questions or part, some of these questions based on the simulation, okay? So what I'm going to do now is go to the simulation. Okay, so here's the simulation. And as you can see here, there's basically, it's fairly simple. It's basically simulating a collection of gas particles here. All of these are green. Uh, I'm going to pause this a minute. So you can see that all of these are green uh, particles. And they're modeled or they're simulated uh, using that kinetic molecular theory model, which is that these are hard spheres they have elastic collisions with each other and with the wall um, and then there's a certain volume here the volume is given as this this is the, the volume of the container you have these gases here um, and then we have a plunger that allows you to kind of change the volume up and down a little bit uh, and then the gases are just moving around randomly as you saw earlier so if I just continue this motion I click here that allows the gas to move back and forth. And there's all these parameters here that you can uh, basically use to 
uh, change. Okay, so for example, if I leave the uh, uh, marker here on the pressure, okay, so you notice that there's pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature, and number of moles are for two different gases, helium and neon. Right now we are seeing helium uh, at one mole, pressure is at one atmosphere, volume is 22.4 liters, and uh, temperature is 275 right now. Um, I can basically see what's going on with a particular parameter uh, if I leave that mark over there. So in other words, pressure right now is marked, right, with this. I can move it here to volume, but right now let's say I mark pressure. So if I were to change volume, the pressure would change correspondingly. Everything else will be fixed. So in other words, the only thing that's changing is the pressure and the volume, okay? Uh, so let's try that, okay? so. One of the first questions is Boyle's law. Boyle's law is P times V equals a constant. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to change the volume of this particular simulation. Okay, so I'm going to move the volume down here. So you can see that as I click down here, you see that plunger is coming down, right? Now, what I want you to look at is oh, here that the pressure number goes up, right? As my volume goes down okay so I keep going down in volume you can see the pressure keeps going up okay the volume obviously comes down here and you can you know pause the video replay it you can see what's going on now I ask you to answer this question why is pressure going up okay what is it about the simulation uh, that tells you that pressure is now going up Okay, and again, you have to understand what pressure is, right, in this simulation. What, uh, what is the parameter that corresponds to pressure, okay? So that, again, is the first question is, am I, you know, when I'm reducing volume, I can see that the pressure number goes up here. So the question is, why is that pressure going up? What is it about the particles? What is it that it's doing that it's making the pressure goes up, okay? So that's the first question. Now... I want to ask a second question now, which is a pressure-temperature relationship. So now you see that I'm, I'm going to stay at pressure, so I'm going to still want to look at what happens to pressure. But now what I want to do is I want to change temperature and all the other factors I want to remain constant. Okay, so let's see what happens there. So I'm going to lower my temperature now. Okay, I'm going to lower my temperature. So you can see as my temperature comes down, my pressure also comes down, right? The number goes down. Okay, and everything else remains the same. You can see that the volume remains the same, nothing's changing. So my temperature keeps coming down, okay, and my pressure keeps coming down. Now again, I'm asking you a question here. Why is the pressure coming down, okay? What is going on? What's happening with these particles that the pressure is now coming down, okay? And that's something you have to answer in your form, all right? So I'm going to reset that again. The third question I want to uh, ask now is a volume temperature relationship. That's Charles's law. Remember that V over T is equal to a constant. So I'm going to move this down to volume. So in other words, I, I want volume to change as I'm changing temperature. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you again a question, right? So you notice that when I low here, I'm going to I'm going to lower the the temperature. Okay. And you see that as I'm lowering temperature, what's going on with the volume value? You can see that the volume value here is also coming down, right? And you see the plunger slowly comes down, okay? So the question is why? Why is that happening? Why, why does volume have to come down, okay? What, what is it about Charles' law? Uh, so again, I go back here. What is it about Charles' law? When I'm, uh, when I'm moving the temperature down, how come the how come the volume has to also come down uh, to to balance that temperature decrease? What is it about Charles' law that's important? What condition must be uh, true in Charles' law in order for Charles' law to hold in order to volume to be proportional to temperature? So think about that. Okay, think about what's going on here. Why does the volume have to come down? Okay. And the last uh, the last law I want to talk about here uh, that you can also explain using this simulation is Dalton's law. So if you remember Dalton's law is, is fairly, it's pretty interesting. Dalton's law says that the total pressure in a gas is equal to the partial pressure of one gas plus the partial pressure of the second gas and so on. Okay, 
I can prove that to you here, okay? You see here that I have uh, the pressure right now, it's one atmosphere, right? And I have one mole of uh, helium right now, okay? So if I were to increase the number of moles of helium to two, so I just bring this up to two, uh, two moles of helium, you see that now the pressure is two atmosphere, 2.02, and there's more helium here, right? Because I, I let in some more helium, okay? So let's reset that. So you remember that the total pressure was two for, for two moles of helium. Reset that. Instead of adding two moles helium, I'm going to add one mole helium and then one mole neon. Now, neon is a bigger gas, okay? We know that because the molar mass of neon is about 20. The molar mass of helium is about 4, okay? So I'm going to add the, the neon in. Neon are these bigger blue uh, circles. I'm going to add exactly one mole of neon to this thing. So now you see both neon and helium are present. Now, what do you see as the total pressure? Okay, you see the total pressure is 2.02, .02, which is exactly the same as when we have two moles of helium. Okay, if you don't believe me, you can, you know, play back that video when I added two moles of helium instead of uh, uh, one mole of helium and one mole of neon. Okay, you have the same exact number. Now, of course, that what that does is just demonstrates Dalton's law. Dalton's law says that the pressure, total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of gas 1, partial pressure of gas 2, and the partial pressure depends on the number of moles. The question is why, okay? This is a, a, an interesting question, right? Because think about it. You, you have something that's a lot bigger, okay? This neon uh, gas particles here, they're a lot bigger. And generally speaking, if you think about a situation where you have something that's a lot bigger, has a bigger mass, right? they also have a bigger force, right? So if you think about a collision between a, a motorcycle uh, to a wall versus a big truck versus a, uh, to a wall, that truck is going to create more damage because the truck comes in with a bigger force, okay? Uh, but in this case, that's not the case with gases. We see that whether you're adding one additional mole of helium or you're adding one additional mole of neon, you get exactly the same effect, which is the same total pressure. So the question is why? And that should be pretty uh, apparent from this uh, simulation that is going on right now. Again, when I have two moles total, one mole helium, one mole neon, I get 2.02. .02. When I have just two mole of helium, I also get 2.02. .02. The question is why? What is the difference? What is it, this, you know, what, what, what explains that? Why is it that adding something that's bigger doesn't make a difference in the amount of force that the, the t -t total pressure that the bigger particles contribute, okay? So those are all the questions I want you to answer in the form. Again, you're free to come here and play with this simulation yourself uh, on your computer, and I really strongly suggest that you do that. Again, here's the address for the simulation at Oklahoma State, and you just need to have Java installed in your browser in order to run this. So it's fairly simple. You should be able to do it in, um, you know, Internet Explorer, Firefox, uh, Chrome, as long as you have Java installed. Okay.